And I ended up working really hard. Um, I ended up getting a job. It was about a year and a half later, but I ended up getting a job. I uh, I went back to the to the government, by the way, after the that incident happened. So I, about a year and a half later, though, my government contract ended. And um, again, I had been doing blogging uh, again on the side and with the government's permission. And I went to work um, for Symantec. Once I got there, uh, you know, I set the ground on fire, just lit the path to, to lead me to my success. And I had really good managers as well that helped me along the way. But I ended up on their attack investigation team, which is the team that does all of Symantec's nation state and now ransomware attacks that you read about publicly. They do it a lot less now because they're a different company with Broadcom and everything else. But all the stuff they did over the years, like the Dragonfly, which was, you know, uh, Russian GRU attacking the the energy and infrastructure, um, just all sorts of Chinese uh, advanced persistent threats. Just everything that we did that was public was the work that the team I was on did. And there was, I think there was like five analysts and and like two, two uh, reverse engineers. So we weren't a big team, and it was sort of the elite team of Symantec that everybody wanted to be on. And and I absolutely loved it. It was my dream job. But point is, I had I I, I had a lot of success there. And you know there were two guys. Um, Eric Chen and uh, Vikram Thakur, and it was my boss was was Vikram, and Eric was was his boss, and you know they were both very encouraging on me to, with me to con- uh, to continue my path towards writing my book. I wanted to be pu- uh, re- be with a publisher in the field. I didn't want to just do it on my own. Nothing wrong with that, but for me to prove what I needed to prove, I wanted a publisher to believe in me to put out a book because there's a difference. And so that's what I did. I started working every Sunday. I would I would spend a couple hours. Because every, every publisher is different. Put together a publishing nomination package, send it off, get a rejection letter, send it off, get a rejection letter. And then I had this epiphany one day. I, I, I was sitting, uh, I was sitting in my office and I looked over to, to, to my bookcase and I just realized that 80% of the books on my bookshelf are from No Starch Press. All my, my hacking books and things like that, you know, tools, open source or Metaspool, whatever it is, they were all from No Starch Press. And I was like, why haven't I tried applying there? And um so I did that. I, I put put in a, nom- a nomination package, sent that off, and I remember it was about a week later. I got a uh, an email back saying that uh, uh, Bill, who is the CEO over at No Starch, um, you know, and his team, they wanted to talk to me about the book. And I was so excited when I got that email. And uh, so we we had a we had a conversation about a week later, and there were a few changes that they wanted from my outline. I'd submitted a sample chapter and an outline of the book. They wanted me to change things up to be more um, interesting to a broader audience, and for yeah. the first half of the book, and and then to dive into the more technical stuff for the second half. Makes sense. They're a publisher. You want to have a broader audience. And it makes it a lot more interesting, to be honest with you. So that's what we did. And uh, my dream, if you will, came true. Um, the book exists now. I saw it in the bookstore for the first time last month um, on the 26th when it came out. I mean, it's just, it's like I said, it's been like a dream for me because it's something I've wanted for so long and it, and it really happened.